Hey everybody, welcome back, Devin UG, original Grognard, sitting back down at the tabletop. We're actually getting back to some tabletop gaming. We haven't been here for a while. Been doing too many live streams and too much stuff on the computer here lately. Figured I should probably go back to the table just because, you know, that's, that's the tabletop. And we're going back to do some old school wrestling with Face to the Mat Wrestling from Play.com. We are continuing our storyline of my all-female wrestling league, the www.com league, the Wild Women of Wrestling Combative League, kind of based on the, uh, the old pow, glow, and wow wrestling of the late 80s and early 90s. I always loved those shows. Those those were great. My Saturday night lineups were typically always the same when I was in high school in the late 80s before I started working. Uh, it would be uh, Kung Fu Theater at 8 o'clock and then Elvira's House of Mystery or Macabre Mansion, whichever one, because they, they changed the name a few times, at 10 o'clock. And then it started off as POW at midnight and then they eventually changed their name to glow or was it the other way around i can never remember and then uh, women wrestling came on came along later so here we are we are we are doing our our end of the season event this is this is going to be the final match of this season and what i'm going to do after this season since a lot of the wrestlers are are are, are kind of amateurs and don't have a lot of skills and stats and sometimes make for a rather boring gameplay we're going to be giving the girls experience. We're going to be giving them. I'm going to go through each one of them. I'm either going to give them another stat, you know, another another skill stat, or I'm going to be increasing their finishing move spread, you know, like we have right here. You know, we got the heavy, powerful, mean, and, you know, when they can be used or the finisher right there. I'm going to be going through, and I'm going to be either giving them an extra stat or if, they're, or if their uh, finisher is real low, I'm going to increase their finisher a little bit. I'm also kind of working on an XP system. I was kind of laying in bed last night going over it in my head. Uh, basically, and I probably will write this up and uh, send it off to Keith uh, over at Play.com, see if we can get it into the newsletter, uh, an experience system. Well, basically, you you perform in a, in a match, you get one point. You win a match, you get one point. You appear in uh, the interview segment, you get a point. And if you're called in as an ally or uh, oh, what are they uh, foe. Uh, into a match, you get another point, and basically you use those points to buy yourself extra skills, or how, or, or how often they're used, or increase your finisher. Still kind of working on the details. You know how it is. You're laying in bed late at night. You start getting some great ideas. The morning comes around. It's like, man, eh, maybe those ideas weren't the greatest, but they sounded really good. So let's see what we can do to make. Yeah, that, that's kind of what it was. So, <laughs> so, so I just need to get off my ass, kind of tweak the system a little bit, make play 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 with it a little bit, make sure that it doesn't give too many experience points too quickly, and and by the same token, isn't too slow and too agonizing. But again, that's you know that's something coming down the pipe. But here we are. This is our All Hallows Eve, the boobtastic. Oh, I mean boobtastic Halloween special. I really need to talk to my my mar marketing guy. He, he, he should have come up with a better name than that. Boobtastic for a female wrestling link. Come on, it leads straight to boobtastic. People are writing boob all over the all over the the, the announcement flyers. It's a disgrace. We are high-minded and 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 hoity-folloity uh, wrestling fans here. We should not be degrading ourselves such as this. At the Emerald Queen Casino in the rainy Pacific Northwest in the beautiful town of Tacoma, Washington. And here we are tonight. This is not a pay-per-view. This is streaming out live on KCTS 13. Is that that's not what our local... I don't have TV anymore. I don't have cable. I don't remember what the local channels are anymore. But let's take a look at some of some of the fans we've got in the... Uh, in the... in the <laughs> Some of the celebrities that have showed up for this year's uh, boo-tastic Halloween special. We have Danny Bonaducci, former child star of the Partridge family and now local Seattle area radio show host. Did not know he was a big wrestling fan, but there he is. And hey, look, there's Bill Nye the Science Guy. Most people don't know this, but before Bill Nye became the Science Guy, he actually worked in a small comedy troupe here in the Seattle area, and they had a long-running TV show in the late 80s called Almost Live. You can still actually find television shows, or you can still find uh, episodes of it on YouTube. I suggest you go check it out. Hilarious, hilarious skits, but it's good to see Bill Nye back in town. And Keith Avalon himself of Play.com has made an appearance. 
Keith, welcome to Seattle. We appreciate it. And let's take a look at some of the bad guy celebrities. Oh my, look, there's Blackbeard's ghost. I didn't realize he was a wrestling fan, but it kind of makes sense. At all, sitting over there with, with, with his retinue is Freddy Krueger. Boy, this Halloween sure does bring out the weirdos. And and who's that 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 hockey man? Jason is that Jason? That is Jason Voorhees. Wow, this should be a really exciting matchup with these celebrities and good guy and bad guy celebrities tonight. So we got an exciting lineup tonight. We got what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six matches. We've got uh, our four regular matches, although one of those matches is going to be a four-way to the death cage match. That's going to be later in the show, and uh, we're going to be having our regular tag team up near at the end. And we are going to have the championship for the belt for the www.com wrestling championship title belt it is going to be coming down between miss wonderful gal and the dominatrix the two of them have been going at each other pretty pretty regularly throughout the entire season and uh since this is going to be the end of the first season we're going to see who's going to actually take the belt uh there's been some complaints from the tag teams that there isn't a tag team belt this year and the commissioner is taking commissioner maurice is taking their their their, their complaints in into consideration but since we added so many tag teams uh, in late in the season, he felt that there wasn't enough wrestling going on with the tag teams to justify who would actually be the best, so we may look at expanding more tag team matches next season. But the first match we got up today, we have uh, Dixie Bottle Rocket Amber against Lady Egypt, or Miss Egypt, or Mrs. Egypt. She changes her name so often. She was last week, I think she was Miss Nefertiti and Lady Cleopatra. She likes changing her name a lot. So we're just going to go with Miss Egypt this time. This is a standard match, and Dixie Bottle Rocket Amber, they don't, there's, there's truth to the saying that they breed them big out on the farm. She's one of our biggest wrestlers. She's just about as big as the Mako Shark size-wise and Mama Tiki and, of course, our, our sumo wrestler Kamikaze. So she's got the bronze and she's got the girth and she's got the strength. And Lady Egypt is more of a quick, smart, agile fighter. So this is going to be speed versus strength. So let's go ahead and jump right into it and see what's going to happen. And just to make sure that there is no cheating because there have been allegations of Maurice, the Commissioner Maurice, fixing the fights and favoring some wrestlers over other wrestlers. We're going to go ahead and shuffle the cards. And one thing I love about these cards, if you take a look at the cards, you got, they're, they're two on each side, so, so you can kind of flip them over like that. But they're also double-sided. So it doesn't matter how you how you do the cards. I mean, sometimes I'll even like take half the cards and flip them around, and then flip them around like that and shuffle them up. But so just so we're proving that we're not having any uh, any collusion or 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 any uh, input from the commissioner, here we are mixing the cards all up. There we go. All right. So pre-match event. Let's go ahead and roll for it. We got a three, which is highlight reel O. We'll go hi highlight reel O, and we have a 26. We're going to read black as the ones column and the white as the <coughs> white as the ones column. 62 highlight reel O. The commissioner makes glowing TV statements about wrestlers reducing grudge grade of both wrestlers and all hot box members by two point. Ooh, 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 that is. <laughs> All right, so the commissioner is saying nice things about everybody, which is very odd. The commissioner doesn't do that very often. He's generally seen as a as a jerk. So that's going to reduce the grudge rating by two of everybody in the hot boxes. That's even all those gals that are up there and on on deck. Wow, we got a lot of people that are losing grudge ratings because some of these gals are kind of some of the newer members and haven't had a chance to build up the grudge rating too much. Wow. You'd think Commissioner Maurice did that on purpose. And then, of course, we do have a couple people. Jubilee Jones, for one, who's got a grudge rating of 14, the highest in the, in the league. Amazing that the little pipsqueak Jubilee Jane has got the most r grudge of everybody here. And Major Babe. So, 
Minus two grudge rating for everybody. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into this, get started. Since I don't have much table space, I'll just go ahead and pull it from here. And if I need to need to change the, shift the cards around, I will. So let's go ahead and get started. Smart. Who we got? It's smart. Miss Egypt is smart. Uh, and she's smart all the time. Wrestler executes silver move per, from personal war repertoire. So that's going to be two points. For silver is always two points unless the wrestler has something special about them. <laughs> so Lady Egypt comes out quick and gives some quick smacks downs to the bottle rocket. Okay, favorite Dixie, bottle rocket Amber, is the favorite. And she executes a gold move from her personal repertoire, which is going to be three points. So Dixie comes back and smacks Lady Egypt around. It says with the hood of a car, but I, I don't think we have a hood of the car in the in the in the in the ring. Uh, next, quick, quick is going to be Lady Egypt, but she's only quick on a square, so that doesn't count. So and Bottle Rocket is not quick. Specialty. Uh, okay, specialty. This is going to whoever... Oh, this has been too long since I since I played. I think it goes to whoever's trailing. And question mark. Oh, God, I should have read up this a little bit more. It has been almost a year since I've played this. All right, we got to check what a question mark is. I think a question mark is just straight up D6. Fairly certain what that is. Let me check it real quick. And I really thought this was going to go a lot smoother. Uh, signature move. Nope, that's a specialty. Wild card grads. Finishing post match. All right, I'll be right back. Take a break for station identification. Okay, that's right. Specialty. God, can't believe I forgot this. All right, specialty. This goes to whoever is in in is not in the lead. So Lady Egypt is going to pull off her specialty move. Unfortunately, because it's very difficult to come up with specialty moves that are theme appropriate for thirty two plus female wrestlers. I don't have what Lady Egypt special, but she pulls her specialty move anyways and <laughs> scores three points. There we go. Woo -hoo! Really close fight to the, so far. Both side, both wrestlers are battling back and forth. Grudge. All right, who's got the highest grudge? It's going to go to Bottle Rocket. And she move, uses a gold move from her personal repertoire. And gold is worth three points. Again, we're just back and forth, virtually neck and neck, tied. Both wrestlers. All right, helped. <clears throat> Neither side is helped. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, going to the next one. Helped again. Again, we have no help. Neither one of these wrestlers are helped. So, going again. Mean. That was going to be uh, Dixie Bottle Rocket Amber. She is mean. She is mean all the time because of the star. And she will get one point by raking Lady Egypt's head against her bootlaces. Ow, that's gotta hurt. Next, we have Grudge. Grudge is going to be Bottle Rocket again. She's going to score a gold move again, so that's going to be three more points. And it looks like the strength is starting to win out over the agility and speed. Heavy again. This is going to go to Dixie Bottle Rocket Amber. She's definitely heavy. And she pulls out a massive pile drive or body slam on Lady Egypt. And that gives two points, and it's a possible pin. And Lady Egypt has a TV grade of C, so in an 11 through 23, three chances to try to break out. 52, nope. 41, nope. 56, and it's a pin. La Dixie, Bottle Rocket Amber pins Lady Egypt in the first fall of the match. And the match goes to Dixie, Bottle Rocket Amber as the crowd goes wild. Yay! I should probably try to get some backgrounds soundtrack for that post match let's see what the post match highlight reel is we got three so we're going to highlight reel x and what do we got uh we got a 14 which is winning wrestler speaks conciliatory words about the opponent decreasing the wrestler's grud grudge grade by two so bottle rocket speaks lots of nice 
words and saying that uh, Egypt was a great wrestler and almost had it in the bag a couple times and reducing her grudge grade by even more. So Lady Egypt is not a negative four grudge. Yes, it is possible to go negative with your grudge rating. All right, so that's the first match in the bag. And we're going to take a station break right real quick while we set up for the second match. And we'll be right back after station identification. All right, here we are, back for our second matchup of the evening. We have two heavyweight, thundering females wrestling tonight in our second face-off of the night. We have Mama Tiki, the Samoan Thunder, who originally got her start here in the Pacific Northwest by showing off on her own uh, public network cooking show, Cooking with Mama Tiki. And she decided she would go ahead and try female wrestling. And we also have, coming to in the opposite corner... We have Mako. Mako and Mama Tiki both are about the same weight class. <laughs> but Mako, and she's often referred to as the Mako Shark, is an albino, which kind of where her name comes from. She's a very quiet, soft-spoken individual who doesn't seem to hold a grudge over anything. Uh, at all, period. So I've kind of made up a special rule for her that her grudge grade never changes, regardless. And if she, if a grudge rating, if she, if it ever is needed to check for a grudge rating for her, it is a grudge rating is zero. And that's one of the things I love about Face of the Mat Wrestling is you just kind of come up with your own little rules that you want. <laughs> For your wrestlers, I mean, it really is. This really is. If you haven't been able to tell, and for the fans of Face to the Mat, no, this is a hugely narrative role playing system. Very, very little decision making that the players make in it. Um, but in a solo system, you, you're you're looking for more narrative than anything else. And this game has got narrative in spades. So, and yes, I do have. And I, and I may post these one of these days. I've got <laughs> write-ups and little special rules for all the all, for most of the female wrestlers. So, but anyways, here we are starting off with the second match, and we'll go ahead. Like I said, we were we are don't want any accusations of cheating. So let's go ahead and mix up the cards and shuffle them some more. Toss them any which way you want to, and flip them and spin them. It really doesn't matter. And I love how this card layout is because each card can have four different results on it, allowing you to. I mean, this is what fifty-six cards, maybe, and that gives you what two hundred some odd results out of the entire deck. So I really like how well, how Keith did with uh, did with this deck. Or how he designed this deck. All right, so let's go ahead with the pre-match roll. What do we got? We got a. Whoops, we need to roll which reel we're going to. Five. That is highlight reel R. Switching to highlight reel R. Let's see what what pre-match event we get. Thirty-one. Heal anger by negative fans' response to interest. Increase heal grudge grade by two. Now technically. Yeah, granted, I've got Mako over here here in the heel position. She's not really a heel. She's uh, she's a neutral. Both these gals, both these gals are actually neutral wrestlers. Uh, I don't always like going with you know. Well, since I've got just as many neutrals as I do face and heels in the league put together, not everybody's going to be heel all the time. So we don't have a heel for this match, so we don't have to worry about it. However, since Mako is in the underdog position, she would normally be considered a heel. But we have her special rule that her grudge grade never changes, so it doesn't matter. She, Mako Mako would not have been angered by the the poor reception, and I don't think it's so much of a poor reception for Mako because everybody loves Mako because she's just this nice, quiet girl who likes to sit in the corner and read her Kindle when she's not wrestling. But everybody. Everybody loves Mama Tiki. Everybody loves Mama Tiki. So they probably, it's probably not that they don't like Mako, it's just they like Mama Tiki more. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start off the match. Uh, okay, Grudge. Well, that's definitely going to go to, oh no, Mama Tiki's Grudge is actually a negative two. And Mako, we're saying her Mako is a zero. So she's actually going to get the Grudge result. And she's going to pull off a bronze move, taking an early one point lead. Uh, go to the next one. A grudge again. You saw me shuffle these cards. I don't know what's up, but Mako, the Mako Shark, pulls off a silver move from her personal repertoire, scoring two points against Mama Tiki. Oops, why am I doing rolling dice? I'm not supposed to be rolling dice. Flipping cards. Our wild card. Woohoo! We love the wild card chart. Go to the wild card chart and roll dice. Okay, this is the wild card at the front or the back. I think it's at the front. Wild card results. It's a normal ring match, not like a cage match, which we do have coming up. Uh, we've got a 62. 
mean. I always go off of what the favorite wrestler is. Whenever you're doing the wild card, you always go off of what the, off the favorite wrestler. Is she mean? She is not mean. Therefore, her opponent scores one point using a foreign object before referee halts match and removes object from the ring. Uh, yeah, Mako, somehow someone slipped her a, a, a unloaded spear gun and she whacked Mama Tiki over the head with her unloaded spear gun. And the referee caught that in time and spotted it and threw out the, the unloaded spear gun, but not before the damage had been done. Grudge. Wow, we're going with Mako again. She pulls off another two-point move. Mama Tiki is just not pulling any moves off yet. Thought this would be a little bit more even because, you know, both of them are heavy, powerful, strong. <clears throat> and Mama Tiki actually has objects she can use. <clears throat> highlight reel. Highlight reel B. Uh-oh, big, big move coming up. Big move. What wild, wacky event is going to happen with the highlight reel? This is where the fun stuff comes into play. Highlight reel B. We got a 42. Fan AIDS wrestler. <laughs> Smashing some food from the uh, concession stand into the face of the opponent. <laughs> Two points. Now, on something like this, we're going to go off of uh, off the whoever's behind because it doesn't have a stat or a skill or anything to go off of, so you have to go off of who's lowest for that. So so, so a fan is actually taking some of Mama Tiki's uh, homemade Samoan cuisine that she brought with it and smashed it into Mako's face, and Mako didn't appreciate that, but it was able to give Mama Tiki a couple points because <laughs> Mama Tiki was able to follow up. Grudge! Oh my, we're going back to Mako again, so that's going to be a silver move. Mako pulls off two more points. Uh, helped. Let's see. Is either side helped? Neither side is helped. All right. So we ignore that. Uh, agile. <laughs> Neither of the ladies are agile. This is a this is a, this is a Godzilla match. So no no agility with either one of these girls. And we have an agile again. So that is the third match in a row, or a third move in a row where no points is scored. And we have where is it? It is the. Oh, what's it called? Uh, fans get restless. And I was just looking at that. Whenever you go three moves without any points being scored. Let's see, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Dead signature, tiebreaker, finishing moves. I know it was just here. Interview, time limit. Ah, the boo rule, yes. Auction eliminates the lulls that sometimes occur in matches, especially in undercard matches between jobbers with few qualities and low TV grades, which is definitely most of the www.com. In such matches, if three fast action cards are drawn with neither wrestler scoring, the audience begins to get restless and demands action. Roll one dice and move the forward wrestler's token for that many spaces on the track. Oh, so everybody's demanding Mama Tiki get back into the fight, and she screams. He takes the van's advice and manages to score one point against the Mako Shark. All right, cheat. Neither girls are cheats. We don't have very many cheats in the uh, in the league, and if they were a cheat, they'd be an automatic heal, and neither girl are heels. Uh, okay, TV move. Okay, so both gals have got a TV grade of B, so it goes down to a tiebreaker, which is whoever is in in the rear in points, which is going to be Mama Tiki. Mama Tiki's got a, B, a TV grade of B, so she goes ahead and scores a point, slowly coming back. Don't know if it's going to be enough. It's that grudge rating. Mama Tiki just loves everybody. She's got too low of a grudge to be in the... Oh, here we have another wild card. Go to the wild card chart. And let's see what wackiness happens next. Okay, so we got a 12 on the wild card. Normal ring, not a cage match. We will be looking at a cage match later. Agile. No, Mama Tiki's not agile. Uh, wrestler injured. Ignore off all athletic qualities of the match. Uh-oh. May score on smart, helped, etc. Uh-oh. So she's going to be, Mama Tiki is injured. She's going to be ignoring her heavy, powerful, and strong. Not that those stats have come into play so far this match, but she's going to be ignoring those for the rest of the match. That is really going to hurt Mama Tiki's chances of winning this. So let's go ahead and continue. Helped. Neither wrestler is helped. Powerful. Both women are powerful. Unfortunately, Mama Tiki's injured, so she can't use that. So, and Mako is powerful on a circle. She, her current score is sitting on a circle. So she does a suplex that throws Mama Tiki in face first into the mat and scores two points. Okay, quick. Neither girl is quick, so we don't have to worry about that. 
favorite. Ah, Mama Tiki, she can pull off a favorite move because that's not a physical stat. And she drops kick the Mako Shark into the rope, scores two points. There is a chance the fans are going wild. Even though she's injured, Mama Tiki is still in this fight. Favorite, which would be Mama Tiki. She gets one more point from getting a favorable ruling from the referee. And Mako's getting, not that she would, but she is getting a little bit upset because she figured she'd have this in the bag already. Cheat, neither girl's a cheat. Wild card, another wild card. Woohoo! We got a 25 on the wild card chart, which is strong. Is Mama Tiki strong? Yes. However, she's injured and she can't use that stat for the rest of the match. Unable to quickly escape submission hold, opponent scores three points. One, two, three, which is a possible pin. Mama Tiki's uh, TV grade is a B, so she'll kick out on 11 through 26 after three chances. First, 53, no. 54, no. Last chance. 46. No, Mama Tiki does not kick out. She is pinned by the Mako Shark, and there is boos and hisses from the crowd because everybody was pulling for Mama Tiki because everybody loves Mama Tiki. So we have the Mako Shark winning. I think that is actually her first win in the squared circle against a fan favorite of Mama Tiki. And let's go ahead and see what the post-match events are. Uh, we got a four. Go to Highlight Reel X. Highlight Reel X, and what's the event from the Highlight Reel X? 43, Celebrity, 3, Keith, <laughs> Keith Avalone himself makes insulting comments about the defeated wrestler. Oh no, Keith is talking bad about Mama Tiki, oh no, that's not good, Keith, how could you? You're such a nice guy, increased defenders, wrestlers, grade, grudge grade by one. Oh, Keith, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> Mama Tiki actually gets her grudge back up to negative one. So that is the end of the second round. And let's see, by the third round, we're moving into it's kind of a patriotic face-off this time. We've got DV6. Nobody is really sure what DV6 stands for. Although uh, we do we do think that the DV stands for Dysfunctional Veteran. And she is going up against a fan favorite, one of the heroes of this of the www.com league of where is she where is major babe <laughs> barbara ann benson the u.s army so this is kind of a patriotic uh face-off because both gals are definitely pro-veteran pro-military and we're going to take a quick station break uh, for station identification and to pay those pesky bills we'll be right back all right, here we are back for the third bout between Barbara Ann Benson, Major Babe, and Amy DV6. Uh, Major Babe is definitely the favorite wrestler. She has the favorite attribute. Uh, DV6 is a neutral wrestler. She doesn't have the heel, but, you know, she's not a favorite, so she doesn't get the favorite spot. So, again, we don't want any appearance of impropriety because there's been lots of accusations of impropriety against Maurice, the commissioner. real shuffle yeah like that that works good <laughs> cut in half there we go i just love that i can spin them and flip them every which way all right pre-match event i have a three which is highlight reel oh might i have a feeling the commissioner's going to get involved with this one all right 34 Hotbox Ally, a favored wrestler, uh, delivers memorable TV speech. Increased grudge grade of Ally and wrestler by two points. Well, Major Babe, for some reason, has got Doom Hill to the Barbarian, which is actually that actually that would would would, would not work. Okay, gotta, okay, we're gonna make uh, Holly the Goldmine Harris the favorite ally. Uh, is going to give a rousing speech for Major Babe that everybody loves, increasing the, what is it, the TV grade? It was. 34. Oh, grudge grade of Ally. Okay. And herself's by two. So Holly's grudge grade goes up by two to a five. And Major Babe's grudge grade goes from a 10 to a 12. Now, if Major Babe could only get a higher TV grade than an E. 
Maybe one of these days. All right, so let's start. Let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, no, I can't do that real well. Okay, quick. Both girls are quick. However, Major Babe is quick on a square, and DV6 is quick on a circle, which they start off with. So it will go to DV6, and she will score three points. And what do we got next? Heavy. Neither gal is heavy. Wild card. We love the wild card. Actually, we love, we love the highlight reels more. We love the highlight reels, but the wild cards are fun, too. We got a 21 on the wild card. 21 is a favorite. Oh, okay. <laughs> Major Babe is definitely a favorite. Succession of Blows leads opponent unable to continue. Wrestler awarded decision and issues a grudge match challenge. Oh, wow. Major Babe just unleashed probably her Firebase fire Zulu double knee lift kick and just devastates Amy DV6, winning the match automatically and setting up a grudge match between the two wrestlers, and we're going to do that probably at the beginning of next season, because as I said, this is the last match for this season, so a quick win by Major Babe, and let's see what happens in the post-game event. Uh, oh, no, one dice for determining post-match. Four, go to Real X. I like Real X. Is a 55. Uh, go to Highlight Real Y. 12. Uh, winning wrestler interrupts TV segment with memorable chair smashing tirade. Increased TV grade by two letters. Hey, weren't we just saying we heard that Major Babe needed to needed to bump up her, her TV grade a little bit? So the post-game interview, Major Babe just totally goes off for some reason, increasing her TV grade by two, which brings her up from an E to a C, almost a halfway decent reasonable. But whatever she did stuck in the minds of the people who were watching making her a little bit more popular and that was a quick match and oh fourth match coming up it is a cage match free for all with four of the wrestlers in the squared circle it's going to be blossom roller girl roller girl doom hilda and comic con and we're going to bring the cage down and we will be right back as we bring the cage down after station identification all right, so the cage is in place, and the four wrestlers have entered. This is going to be a no-holds-bar cage match to the death. Well, maybe not to death, but last man standing. Uh, we've got, uh, what do we got? we got Edzilla Blossom Running Water as one of the favored wrestlers. Comic-Con, who likes dressing up in different outfits every time, and who knows what she's dressed up as for Halloween, because she dresses up differently all the time. <laughs> we got... Tony Roller Girl Williams used to be a uh, uh, roller derby gal. Decided to uh, make the jump over to female wrestling. And Doomhilda the Barbarian, the big Norse Viking badass bitch. And this is a cage match, so there's going to be no outside help, no outside assistance. And since it is also a cage match, the victor will get one. TV grade while the losers all lose a TV grade. So, shuffle up the cards. Again, shuffling up the cards so there's no question of impropriety. And so basically what we're going to do is since we got four uh, four wrestlers this time, uh, the white chip is going to be Edzilla, the red chip is going to be Comic-Con, Doom Hilda is going to be the black chip, and Roller Girl is going to be the blue chip. All right, so probably have to move the car. Oh, yeah, we got pre-match. <laughs> Almost forgot the pre-match. Pre-match six. It is Highlight Wheel Real R. And what do we have? 43, 43. Heel angers crowd with taunts. Face responds by whacking heel with a folding chair. D6 blows for one point each. All right. So do we have anybody? Who, yeah, actually, both of Doomhilda and Tony are both heels. Uh, and technically, neither one of these have got the favorite, but it, it's not favorite. It's face. So I guess we're going to do it. So it goes, well, this is a... This is a, well, she can't really smack him with a chair because it's a cage bed. Well, she just smacks him around. And who's it going to be? Who's she going to whack? 
Tony or Doom Hilda. One, two, three, four, five, six. Going to be Doom Hilda. Gets whacked. And Adsilla is going to whack her once for one whole point. Well, at least it gets her out there for an early start. All right, let's go ahead and start. Smart. Who's smart? Adsilla is smart. Blossom is smart. And she's a, she's a smart circle. And she is on circle. Comic Con smart as well. And that's it. And since it's just the two of them, and they both have smart, then it goes to whoever is behind. So Comic Con will go ahead and score one, or no, that's two points. So, next play. Strong. Well, we definitely got the, we got, uh, we got one strong. Doom Hilda. Doom Hilda will go ahead and break opponent's submission hold and delivers a jarring chin blow for two points. So allowing, oops, that's the wrong one. Doom Hilda is black. It's going to be hard for me to see the, the black chit over the black text and the black uh, circles. All right, next. TV move. Headlock. Who's got the highest TV? That's going to be Tony Roller Girl. She's got a B, so she is going to score two points by do putting one of her opponents in a headlock. And let's see what do we got next. Heavy. That's back to uh, Doom Hilda. I believe she's the only heavy, and she's heavy all the time. So she crushes one of her opponents with a splash move. I've got some exciting action going on here. Mean. That would be Doomhilda. Again, Doomhilda is the only one. Unfortunately, she's a mean square, and she is not on a square, so it's nothing. Strong. Okay, Doomhilda is strong, and none of the rest of them are. So Doomhilda is unfazed by opponent's body, spla body slam and responds with a series of blows, giving her two points. Wow, Doomhilda coming out ahead. Looks like everybody's trying to gang up her on her, and she is definitely beating back mean. Mean, okay, Doomhilda is mean square. She's on a square. Is there any other means? No other means. <laughs> she gives an opponent a brutal neck twist. Wow, she's just dominating the opposition. So, wild card. Uh oh, wild card, wild card. Go to the wild card chart. 23, and this is a cage match. So we go a wild card cage match result. 23, strong. The favored, Adsilla and Comic-Con, neither one of them are strong. So, opponent smashes the rest of his body into a cage and scores one point. Who was it? One, two, three for Roller Girl. Four, five, six for Doom Hilda. Doom Hilda, wow, she's just racking up the points, beating around these other girls like they're not even there. Favorite, that would be uh, Adsilla. She'll go ahead and come out on top of that one. And she's pumped up by the cheering crowd, so she'll go ahead and score one point. Another wild card. Cage match wild card. 56. Uh oh, this could be bad. 56. Smart. Uh, Blossom is smart. And Comic Con is smart, but it's going to go to Blossom. So we got a 56. Not distracted by spectacle outside the ring. Puddles one of our opponents for two points. Oh, looks like it's still starting to squeeze up there a little bit with. Beating on our opponents. Heavy. Again, I think we're only looking at Doom Hilda. She's the only one. Falls on top of an opponent. Ouch. Smack. Not good. Helped. This is a cage match. No helped. No outside interference. Agile. We are looking at Comic Con and Roller Girl. Let's see. Comic Con is. Uh, Agile all the time, but Roller Girl is only agile when she's on a square. She's not on a square. This goes to Comic Con. Kind of Comic Con executes a Boston Crab maneuver on one of her opponents and scores two points. Boy, Roller Girl just not doing real good. She's uh, she's kind of sitting in the back. Looks like she's taking the brunt of everybody's abuse. Grudge. Who's got the highest grudge? <laughs> that would be Roller Girl. There we go. She pulls out a bronze move from personal repertoire, so that scores her one point. Another grudge again. It's going to be Roller Girl again and moves a silver and executes a silver move from her personal repertoire. Okay, she's a little bit tired of being beat up on. Now she's making a little bit of a comeback. TV move is going to be Roller Girl again with a B for two points. So she's moving up, catching up to Doom Hilda and has passed Blossom and Comic Con. Object. All right, no object. 
because this is a cage match. No way to get an object in the cage match. Mean. It's going to go back to Doom Hilda, but she's only mean on a square, and she is on a square. So in Flicks pain with an ugly boot scrape. She's getting close to pinning one of her opponents. Agile. That is going to be Comic-Con and Roller Girl. Let's see. Comic-Con is agile all the time. Roller Girl is agile on a, squ on a square. She is on a square, so it goes to the lower. Since they're both tied, it's going to go to Comic-Con. She's going to get one point by uh, escapes a double arm lock and whirls around, whirls around to deliver an elbow smash. Bam! Quick! Uh, Blossom is quick on a square, which she's not on right now. Comic-Con is quick all the time. Roller Girl is quick on a circle, which she's not. And Doom Hilda is not quick at all. So this is going to go to Comic-Con. And she's going to slip behind an opponent and deliver multiple kidney punches. Ow! Those hurt. Those are not good. All right. Object. It's a cage match. Nobody can bring an object in. Helped. Cage match. Nobody can help. Quick. All right. Uh, Blossom only on a square. Nope. Uh, Comic-Con is always quick. Roller Girls is quick on a circle, but she's not. And Doom Hilda the Barbarian is not quick at all. So it goes to Comic-Con for three points. Avoids a suplex slam and surprises opponent with a toe hold. Wow. Not even sure. I want to know how that's going to go down. Heavy. This is going to go to Doom Hilda. She's heavy all the time. And she gets an opponent in an extended bear hug. Oh, no. What's a possible pin? Who she's going to possibly pin? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's, she's going after Edsilla. So, and she's a, and Edsilla is a C TV grade. So she'll kick out on 11 through 23. So one, two. Three. Oh, no, she does not kick out in time. Blossom is pinned and eliminated from the match. She will lose a TV grade from this. So, but the fight will continue. All right, specialty. Who's going to be? It's going to be Roller Girl's special move. And her specialty is four points. And I haven't figured out what her special move is yet. And some of the later wrestlers that I added in the league I haven't come up with a real good uh, flavor text for their moves yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, but maybe one of these days. Smart! Let's see. Comic-Con is smart on a circle. Nope. Uh, Roller Girl is not smart at all, and neither is Doom Hilda. So that's zero points for that one. Mean, back to Doomhill to the Barbarian. Mean on a square. And she is on a square. So Traps and Opponent extended chokehold continues hold after ref intervenes. There's going to be one brave ref to be in the cage with all these women. Uh, smart is going to be, let's see, Comic Con's only smart on a circle. No other smarts. So that's nothing. Grudge. Highest grudge grade is going to be Roller Girl again. So she's going to lay down a gold move, which is going to be a possible pin. Who's she going after? One, two, three, Comic Con. Four, five, six, Doom Hilda. She's going after Doom Hilda. Wow, Doom Hilda is a C. So she'll kick out on 11 through 23. Uh, oh, there's a kick out. 12. She kicks out just in time. So she doesn't get pinned. Probably going to piss off the Roller Girl a little bit. Grudge. That is going to be, well, Roller Girl again. So that's going to put to a finisher. Her finisher is absolute crap. Who's she going to try to finish? Comic-Con or Doom Hilda? One, two, three, four, five, six. Doom Hilda. So she's going to try to pull off the finisher on Doom Hilda. 46 does not pull off the finisher because her finisher is crap. With the experience points thing, yeah, I think, uh, think she's going to get uh, a bump in her. <laughs> Her finishing uh, spread. All right, wild card. Cage match wild card. 15. Favorite wrestler bashes. Uh, no, the favorite. There is no favorite. Uh, so Comic Con's going to be, or no. So it goes to either Doom Hilda or Roller Girl. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's say 15. Fatigue. Unable to use gold, silver, bronze moves for the rest of the match. So the favorite wrestler, which is going to be Comic-Con, even though she doesn't have favorite, she is the favorite Matt, favorite uh, wrestler. She is no longer going to be use, able to use specialty moves. All right. Signature. 
Uh, refer to previous fast action card. If wrestler scored points, scored points, then intensify move with signature double. They did not score points, so nothing from that card. Helped. Cage match. Unable to be helped. Highlight reel. Highlight reel A. Oh, this could be bad. This could be bad. 61. Highlight reel A. Okay. <laughs> wrestler throws celebrity into a crowd. Okay, well, it's a cage match, so we can't throw anybody into the rest, into the ring. So that's probably a good thing. <laughs> quick. Uh, who's quick? Comic-Con is always quick. Roller Girl's quick on a circle, which is not on. And Doom Hilda is not quick. So Comic-Con is going to score two points by uh, Stun's opponent with a double arm bar. So we're getting right down to the end. How much more can any of these women take? TV move. Again, that's going to be Roller Girl with a B. She's going to score two points. Oh, she's going to try to pin somebody with the axe handle smash as a startup. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five, six. She's going after Doom Hilda again. I guess there is no honor among thieves as the bad guys are beating up on each other. Uh, Doom Hilda's got a CTV rating, so she kicks out an 11 through 23. Uh, 23. Okay. <laughs> that did it. She kicked out. Much to the chagrin of Roller Girl yet again. Cheat. Who is a cheat? Doom Hilda is always a cheat. Tony Roller Girl Williams is also a cheat. Unfortunately, Doom Hilda's behind, so she will go ahead and get to use the cheat move of two points, inflicting a painful blow to opponent. Uh, okay, what do we got? Favorite. Uh, okay, well, that would be Comic Con. A wrestler moves, a wrestler uses specialty move even if not on appropriate space. So Comic-Con is going to go ahead and use her specialty move for two points. And who is she going to go after? Is she going to try to pin Roller Girl or Doom Hilda? One, two, three, four, five, six. So she is going after Tony, the Roller Girl, and her TV grade is a B, so she kicks out on a 26. So 26, there we go, another kick out. What do you know? Maybe I should switch the dice around to be the tens, white as the tens column, but we're not doing that yet. Powerful. Um, surprisingly enough, none of the girls are powerful. We're running out of cards here. Favorite, that would be Comic-Con with two points power surge. So she's going to get to use her finisher. Who's it going after? Roller Girl or Doom Hilda? One, two, three, four, five, six. She's going after Roller Girl and... Comic-Con's finisher is 11 through 33. She's got a bit of a better finishing move spread than Roller Girl. And it is a 35 or 53 failed. Is unable to finish off Roller Girl. Uh, TV moves going back to uh, Roller Girl. And she's a B, so that's going to be one point. So she's going to attempt to try to pin somebody again. Is it Comic-Con or Doom Hilda? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 going after Doom Hilda again. With a C rating, she'll kick out on a 23. Uh, 14 kicks out. Wow, Doom Hilda is just not... Uh, I mean, th I think Tony, the Roller Girl, has spent more time uh, trying to pin Doom Hilda than she's done anything else. Oh, wild card. All card in the cage match, 25. Wrestler attacks referee, immediately disqualified. Favorite wrestler, not disqualified. Okay, so let's see. Favorite wrestler. Uh, okay, so it says favorite, not favored. This is favored. There's a difference. So one of the gals is going to be attacking the referee and gets disqualified. One, two, three, four, five, six. We got a four. It's Roller Girls. For some reason, she's been so pissed off that she can't pin Doom Hilda that she takes it on the referee and the referee throws her out of the ring. So now we've got, I think I messed up the counters on Roller Girl and Doom Hilda. Oh well. Because uh, I think Doom Hilda was actually the black chip. Oh well. And I'm sure someone's probably going to go, you idiot, you messed up. Yeah, you're right, I did. I didn't have anything marking the color, so I'm sorry. Deal with it. That's wrestling. Alright, so now it's down to Comic Con and Doom Hilda. Specialty. Wrestler uses a specialty move. It's going to be Comic-Con. She's... Oh, she can't. Oh, no. Specialty. She can't use bronze, silver, or gold move. But she can use her specialty move, so that's going to score her two points. Uh, mean. That is going to go to... Yes. Mean on a square. That is Doom Hilda. That's going to be two points. She's going to attempt to pin Comic-Con. Comic-Con's TV rating's a D. She kicks out on a 16. 35. Nope. 42. Nope. This could be the end. It's the end. Doom Hilda just falls on top of Comic Con, pins her, and Comic Con is unable to kick out. So we have Doom Hilda, the winner of the Death Cage match.
And that actually, that's probably one of the longest matches I've ever had. So, all right, post match. Let's see, three highlight reel X. That's a 61 on the highlight reel X. Commissioner interrupts TV interview with winning wrestler to express, express disappointment with wrestler's performance. Uh-oh. Increased wrestler's grudge, grudge grade by two points. Well, that's kind of good because Doom Hilda had a negative grudge grade. And with the commissioner Maurice stepping in and irritating her, she probably she didn't break the little twerp snack. Her grudge grade is brought up to a zero. Now, she won the cage match. So that's going to increase her grade by one to a B. And the other gals all lose a TV grade. Comic-Con goes down to an E. Roller Girl goes down to a C. And Blossom goes down to a D. Big hits for all losing gals. All right, we got the... Uh, Tag team, or no, we've got uh, Jammin' with Jubilee interview segment coming up. Let me go ahead and take another station break, and we'll be right back. Okay, and we're back, stepping in into the interview segment of the show tonight. Our perky rhinestone and sparkly clad own Jubilee Jane is our regular interviewer, and she is going to be interviewing the Dominatrix tonight, uh, preparing for the big, big wrestling belt championship showdown with Miss Wonderful Gal. And let's see what happens during the interview segment. We got a 12. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> guest attempts to hype up her next match, but fails miserably. Reduced guest TV grade by one letter grade. Oh, that's not good. Seems like the dominatrix was trying to trying to pump up her 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 match with Miss Wonderful Gal, but just seemed to be flubbing and uh, couldn't uh, couldn't couldn't get the uh, couldn't really get what she was trying to say. Kind of like what I'm doing right now, stumbling over my own tongue. So she ends up losing a, a TV grade out of that. That may end up hurting her in her match with Miss Wonderful Gal at the end of the show. Next, we got the tag team match coming up. So let's go ahead and we'll be right back after we set up the table for the tag team match. Okay, and we're back for being set up for our tag team match. We are looking at a couple of tag team crews that really haven't got much play in the in the in the in the season, uh, being kind of late entries into the league. We've got the the California Princesses, Buffy and Muffy, and they're in uh, the favored corner. And we have the Roadkill Crew, Bertha and Angela, over in the underdog corner. So. If I had to put money on somebody, I'd put it on the Roadkill crew. They look a little bit tougher and rougher and, you know, standing up there with their orange safety jackets and their stop signs as compared to the California princesses who are kind of busy, you know, fluffing their hair and checking their makeup. I don't don't think the, the princesses are going to stand up to a real concentrated match. But let's go ahead as the referee introduces both wrestlers or all four wrestlers. We shuffle the deck just so there's no chance of malfeasance on anybody's part. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our tag team championship. Well, it's not really a championship because the Murr commissioners decided he didn't want to do a championship this year because of reasons. Grudge, who's got the highest grudge? First of all, it's going to be Angela and Muffy are going to be out in the ring first. Looks like with California Princess Muffy is going to have the higher grudge and she's going to pull off a silver move. So she's going to score two points early against Angela, and that means she'll go ahead and tag out. Now, there is an optional rule uh, of a tag out table. I don't usually use it just because I don't want to confuse myself even more than I have to, but there is an, uh, there is an optional chart. I may use it one of these days where uh, during tag team matches you roll a D6 and... Uh, uh, you, you could get a you could get a, a regular tag in. You could get no tag in. You could get a hot tag in where uh, the person comes in and immediately scores a point. Well, maybe one of these days I'll I'll start using that chart. But today we're not. All right. So what do we got next? Heavy. Neither girl is heavy. So we continue on. Helped. Uh, ah, yes. Buffy is helped by her manager Biff. Uh, the California Princess's manager is Biff, and he is going to help her. So we're going to go roll on the management table. 
which is Highlight Reel M, I believe, for 54. Highlight Reel M, 54. Uh oh, <laughs> opponent angered. Leaves ring to engage manager, fails to return in time. Wrestler awarded decision. Oh my! That was that was quick. That was that was really really quick. Um, yeah. So it looks like Angela got a little too pissed off at whatever uh, Biff was doing over there in the corner, and she got out and she started chasing him around, and evidently wasn't paying too much attention to the time and failed to get back into the ring in time. And the match is over. Given over to the California princesses who win by a timeout. Okay. Well, that shows you how well my uh, prediction results go. <laughs> But hey, this is wrestling. Anything can happen, and oftentimes does. So we're going to go ahead and go to station identification again, get it set up for the last match, the title belt match for the belt, Miss Wonderful Gal against the Dominatrix. And I totally forgot to do the post-match. Actually, I forgot to do the pre-match as well. Oh, well, we're not going to worry about the pre-match. Let's go straight to the post-match. Let's see. One, go to Highlight Reel X. Highlight Reel X is 53. Hotbox Alley of defeated wrestlers offer disarming comments of reducing allies' grudge grade by, grudge grade by one point. Okay, so it looks like uh, uh, Yuki Kamikaze Usawa was, uh, is, was backing up the Roadkill crew and after the interview made some comments that weren't taken real well by the fans and weren't taken real well by the uh, Roadkill crew themselves. And so they lose a grudge grade, which is not good because the girls are now negative in their grudge grades. All right, now we'll be back after setting up for the championship bout. And here we are, we're back. This is what everybody's been waiting for, the title bout, the final match of the evening of the season, the winner-take-all championship belt match between Miss Wonderful Gal, the Emerald Princess herself, the Cape Heroine, against... The masked mistress of mayhem, the Dominatrix. And this is a challenge. This has been a match that's been coming all year. The gals have clashed a couple times in the past. Seems like the Dominatrix has always been able to come out on top, but Mr. Wonderful Gal promises a rousing. Uh, fight and promises she's not going to let the people of Seattle, the Seattle Tacoma area down, and she's going to beat the Dominatrix. So, let's find pregame events. Let's see. Highlight reel O for pregame events. So many highlight reel charts. Love the highlight reel charts. All right. Uh, 21. <laughs> celebrity 1. Who is Celebrity 1? Danny Bonaducci. Heaps praise on the favored wrestler. Reducing favored wrestler's grudge grade by two points. Oh, Danny, why'd you have to do that? You had to give her a bunch of praise. Make her feel all good about herself. And that reduces her grudge grade to four. Well, wouldn't have made too much of a difference anyways. Dominatrix's grudge grade was a seven. So it would have been nice if Miss Wonderful Gal had gotten a grudge rating up by one. So at least she could match. But uh, yeah, Dominatrix with the grudge rating of seven is going to win all grudge matches or grudge checks in the game. And again, since we definitely don't want any accusations of malfeasance or cheating for this match, go ahead and flip and spin and shuffle the cards. And there's the bell. Ting. Part of me does think I need to get... Uh, some sound effects, a soundboard or something for this. All right, TV move, head scissors. This is definitely going to Miss Wonderful Gal. She's got a, a TV rating, a AAA, the highest in the league. She's basically what the entire league was formed around. Uh, so that is going to be A, that's going to be five points. She's pulling a massive head scissors. Whoops, wrong side. Let's make sure we scored on the right person. <laughs> this wonderful gal pulls off a brutal head scissors move against the dominatrix, almost ripping the woman's face mask off. Who is this masked leather clad goddess? Nobody knows. Specialty. Okay, this is going to go to the dominatrix. <laughs> the dominatrix is going to pull her specialty of the atomic fanny paddling to score to herself two points. 
Yeah, I had some fun naming some of these moves. Okay, helped. All right, the Dominatrix is going to be helped. And there's a knock at the door. And the channel had some technical difficulties there. It looks like the weather was affecting our hamsters that are running power in the, uh, the uh, <laughs> signal generator. But we have helped. And so the Dominatrix has her <laughs> assistant, Rupert the Leather Gimp, is going to be helping her out, uh, the underling. Uh, so it's going to be... Uh, wrestler gets help from outside ring. Opponent suffers blow from foreign object. Let's not even go and try to figure out what the foreign object Rupert the Leather Gimp uh, handed the Dominatrix so she could whack Miss Wonderful Gal. This is a family show. Let's just not go there. <laughs> Favorite, Miss Wonderful Gal executes a gold move, scoring herself three points. You know, she's probably doing better now than she has in many of the past matches against the Dominatrix. Let's see if she can keep this up. Strong. Uh, let's see. Well, that goes to Miss Wonderful Gal. She's strong on a circle, and she's on a circle, so that is going to give... Uh, she is unfazed by opponent's body slam and responds with a series of blows for two points. Excellent, Miss Wonderful Gal. Coming out early, quick, strong lead. Cheat. Uh-oh, that would be the Dominatrix, but she's only a cheat. What a square. It's not a square, so no score. A quick. Uh, yeah, Miss Wonderful Gal is quick. She's quick on a square. She's not on a square, so no score. A third one. Cheat. Back over to the Dominatrix. Inflicts painful body blows to opponent with foreign object. Again, I don't want to know what the foreign object she could be using is. Although I'm sure the fans are eating it up, whatever it could be. Favorite, that's Miss Wonderful Gal, who uses a specialty move, even if not on appropriate space, which is the power reverse hammerlock scoring her three points, and she's going to put the Dominatrix into a pin position. Get your minds out of the gutters, gentlemen. It's her, her, her uh, grade is a, her TV grade is a C, so she kicks out on a 23. So we got three chances, 44, nope. Uh, 52, nope, third final chance, 63, no, there we go, boys and girls, Miss Wonderful Gal pins the Dominatrix, and probably the second win that Miss Wonderful Gal has had against the Dominatrix this season, and the title bout belt goes to Miss Wonderful Gal, the Emerald Princess herself, the caped heroine, she is this season's reigning champion. Much to the much to the disgust and chagrin of the Dominatrix and Rupert the Leather Gimp. Alright, let's see what the post-match highlights are. Three is gonna go to Highlight Reel X. And uh watch watch the more you step in and say it's a null and void. It happens, it has happened before. Uh oh, eleven, go to highlight reel Y. Uh oh. The more highlight reels you go deeper, the more oddball the events are. 46. Hotbox ally of defeated wrestler talks trash. Increase both ally and wrestler TV grades by one grade. Well, let's see. That would be uh, Tony Roller Girl Williams. She's actually an ally of the Dominatrix. And so she's talking trash and says that the, the fight was rigged and Miss Wonderful Gal cheated and that should, should have totally gone to the Dominatrix. And both gals go up by one letter grade, which is good because... The more letter grades you have, the more viewers you get. No, actually, it's, it's how hard it is to pin you. All right, so there you go, boys and girls. That is our All Hallows Eve spooky boob, I mean, boo-tastic wrestling event into the season. And like I said, I'm going to be going through and revamping uh, the gals' cards some. Because really, if you take a look at these gals and the cards of, uh, you know, more mainstream wrestling uh, crews, uh, severely lacking in skills. I mean, you take a look at some of the professional leagues and they've got like seven or eight skills on them. And, but, yeah, you know, it makes sense. These gals are kind of amateur uh, just starting off professionally. But I do want to uh, go through and... Uh, increase give give them all a little bump and uh i'm still working on the xp chart i'm thinking of also adding in that uh, every wrestler gets an experience point every week uh just because just to represent training and something so even if they don't get a get a chance to get in about they're at least getting a little bit something out of training every week so but yeah like i said if 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 that comes to fruition i'll uh i'll, I'll write it up and send it off to uh, keith avalon but this has been face to the mat play.com p-l-a-y.com another great design keith avalon and yes 
we are going to get back to regular war games here. I'm probably going to sit down tomorrow. That well, by the end of the week, I'll have I'll have an actual hex encounter video up. We're 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 going to be looking at open fire from Victory Games. I know people have been been asking me to do that, so we're going to be getting to that. Uh, probably do an unboxing and content uh, view over, and then uh, then start working on getting through one of the scenarios. That's all I got, everybody. You know what's coming. You know what's coming. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section. I'll see everybody next time. See ya!